So I want to talk about what everybody is talking about right now and these MAGA protests or by his better name, riot, um, that's going on in D.C. Um, this is what everybody's going to be talking about for a while. So I have a few thoughts about this and I'm just going to briefly state them. I'm going to do a few other videos to try to get in more details um, about what I'm thinking here. So just off the bat, it's a tragedy whenever anybody lose their life. Uh, so far, we know that one woman has been killed during the protest. Not a lot of details about exactly what happens, but that's what it is. And like I said, we don't take human life as serious as we should. And that's just all around the board. So I want to start with that. Number two, this is not profound. This is just, this is not something that only I have served, but I think most people, if you being honest, can see the difference in how black protesters are treated compared to hostile white MAGA protesters. And that's not shocking. Um, that's part of the reason why we black people have been protesting police brutality to begin with, because we are treated differently. So I just want to dispel a few of the myths that already was out there. Um, you had people saying that, oh, well, there was no looting. Really? What do you call breaking windows and breaking into property that's not yours, um, sitting at, on, in property that's not yours, taking stands, um, trying to walk off with stuff inside the Capitol? That's looting. But, you know, I don't even waste my time arguing with some people anymore. Because in all reality, they don't care about the truth. It's always a justified reason why they do it and why it's justified um, for them to oppress their opponents. That's just what it is, you know, and they don't really care about the reasoning. The, all they care about is that their side is on top. And sometimes they won't even justify it. I done met some people just like, you know, that's just the way it is. We in power. Um, we can do what we want to do. So that's another observation. Um, one other thing I want to say is that none of this should be surprising, right? If you've been paying attention, this has been going like this for a while. And I doubt this would be the last incident. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if stuff get much worse much much worse down the line it might not happen tomorrow it could be a year or two down the line because i don't see this anger curbing and you know i i think about this a little bit differently because i'm hearing people say uh oh let's just reach out to them we gotta hear each other out and they trying to say okay we the problem is that we don't talk to each other and I just think people that say that fundamentally don't get what's going on, right? And I'm, I'm going to share some of my experiences just, just to, um, just so y'all have an idea why it is I think the way I think about this. So when I was in the Air Force, I was stationed in a very conservative area. It was in the Panhandle of Florida, right? So when I went there, my first thoughts was like, where am I at? Where the hell am I at, right? I saw Confederate flags everywhere. I actually seen Confederate flag stores. And when I say stores, it was Confederate flag shirts, Confederate flag phone cases, um, just Confederate flag stuff everywhere. And it was a very small area. There was a big giant Confederate flag across the street from the Walmart. And so I was just like, I was taken aback because I was very young too. And being there for a few years, just talking to the people around that area, talking to people, some of the people I was actually serving with and having various political discussions, none of this surprised me 
you know, this is not something new that would, that's just pertaining to Trump. Now, what Trump is, he's a nighter. He's the one that can light the fire and actually get them to act on some of this. But right wing radio back in the 2000s, because I always wanted to know what the other side was thinking. So I would listen to right wing radio, the Rush Limbaugh's, um, the Michael Savages, the Laura Ingram's, uh, all that during this time period. And not just them, but what their callers were saying was just downright crazy. They didn't really care about democracy. They didn't care about rights. They cloaked their white supremacy in that. So, and when I say white supremacy, uh, that doesn't mean that they didn't have any people, any non-people that, any non-white people around them or in their group. What I mean by that. If you was not white, let's just say you was black, right? You had to share in a similar mindset, you know, um, and just accept the way things were. And yes, they would accept you into that group. So that's just the way it was. So from from there on out, that really shaped the way I thought about world world events. I met uh, people that was in support of militias, people that knew people that was in militias, people that was planning to join militias when they got out, um, just all sorts of crazy stuff. We had outright racists. <laughs> I mean, just like for real, just outright white supremacist racist serving, you know. And when I say this, don't don't think that everybody that was in the military was like that. No, the military, just like all groups of population, you had your races, you had black people like me, you had liberals, you had conservatives. It was just any group you could think of was in the military. But at the particular base, maybe because the area I was in, it was highly concentrated in this far right wing ideology. So... Like I said, if you was around that, none of this would be surprising right now. And too many people have been trying to placate what's been going on. Just turn them blind eye and want to do kumbaya, we'll reach out. Like, no, they don't care about that. Like I said, they never cared about democracy. They only care about democracy when it fits their agenda. You know, um they would shred the constitution in a minute and submit to an authoritative dictatorship if their side was staying in power. Just straight up, just straight up. And the ironic thing is they, a lot of these people, um, there's two groups of people, people that know what's up and know um, what they saying is BS and they wanna um, just be in power and you have some people that actually convince themselves that they are um patriot and they doing the right thing and this country is over is uh, under siege and been being watched by the cult of person the personality of trump and just the ideology of um the right wing so far so you have all these different right wing groups right now that have been popping up um there's no use of re reaching out to them uh, I'm, I'm sorry. They have certain ideology that's, like I said, that's cloaked in white supremacy. They don't want to be reached out to. You know, um, their mission, explicit, if you look up some of these groups and you look up some of these right wing ideologies, they state right in their mission that um, they want America to stay a white country. And, like, their whole point of their group is to discriminate. It is what it is. So it's no need for me to reach out to that. I'm not going to reach out to you. It's a waste of time. You know, they have the, the ideology and they have what they want to do. And they don't care <laughs> if you reach out or not. You know, um, so that that's what it is on that. And it's funny. Um, it, well, it's not funny. 
But if you think about it, why would this be surprising that it has come to this? When, you know, we've been overthrowing democratically elected governments all over the world for years on end. So eventually, why wouldn't they want to do a, a, a coup and overthrow a democratically elected government in its own country if it doesn't serve their beliefs? You see, once you don't check something, when it starts, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you under the mindset that, yes, I can just overthrow any government I want any time I want to just because they don't just because they don't carry my particular beliefs. Like, why wouldn't eventually it apply here? You know, um, to them, they the patriots and, you know, um, Democrats and, and, and the crazy thing is <laughs> Biden is not going to fundamentally change anything. That's what he said out of his own mouth. But because he's a Democrat and he might do a few changes around the edges and the fact that he went against their caught hero, Trump, he's like um, the most authoritative dictator in the world and he's going in democracy just because of that. It's not logical, but that's how these people are thinking. So, and the other thing, they think that because Trump lost the election, that, you know, is tyranny. And they never think about, because they don't care, but they never think about, um, there is a segment in this country that been under authoritative rule for hundreds of years. I mean, black people in this country under Jim Crow, I'm not even talking about slavery, even after slavery, under Jim Crow, wasn't allowed to vote consistently. You had, grand, you had poll taxes, grandfather clause, anything they could think of to stop black people from voting. Um, you had housing discriminations. Um, you had lynchings that never was prosecuted. Even to this day, we have police killings that go unpunished all the time. So they don't think about it like that. Why? Because it's not their side. They, what they want to do, they want to continue to be on top by any means necessary. That's it, you know. Um, so what's going to be the aftermath for this? Unfortunately, um, I don't think what should happen will. Um, Congresswoman Cori Bush is introducing, um, is going to introduce legislation to try to expunge the members of Congress that help incite this violence. And I think that's need to happen. Unfortunately, I have no confidence that will happen at all. Um, people is talking about the 25th Amendment, but I highly doubt that happens as well. Um, just to get Trump out of here, even though he only have a couple weeks left, he is a danger um, that should happen, but I doubt that happened. And even if it did, that probably would lead to more violence and white and riots, right? But it needs to happen anyway, just because he son Trump is so unhinged. You don't know what he's going to do next. So um, getting him out of office would be the right thing to do. I just don't have any confidence of the right thing will be done. So that's that's just a few of my thoughts. I, I want to get deeper in some of these um, issues, especially when it comes to the call of personality, right? Um, because this this um, the max supporters it is a mix of white supremacy but that's not the only thing it entails like i said i think a lot of people can fall victim to the call personality and trump while a lot of us will look at him as a buffoon he does have um a certain how can i say this uh certain type of 
being charismatic um, to a certain group of people. You know, because he expressed outwardly, even though internally it's probably not the case, he expressed confidence um, in the way he talks. He talks about, he talks like he was this big successful business person, um, constantly talking about he was a winner, he was on TV, and some of those people just fell in love with him talking and quote unquote telling it like it is, even though he lied every other sentence. But because he go against the establishment he goes against conventional um, thinking and he talks kind of in with, with real I, i'm gonna put it like this <laughs> people love ignorance so he talk in a certain ignorant tone um and people is attracted to that you know um a certain a certain type of person will be attracted to that so it's it's a call to personality as well. So it just is what it is at this point. Hopefully, you know I I don't I don't I haven't lost total hope, right? As far as reaching out to adults, I think that's done. I don't I think people once they reach once they in their late twenties, thirties, forties, and beyond. The less they want to change and seeking out information their self is not going to happen. Uh, I just don't believe you're going to change a dot mind because I have literally seen people look at evidence and what they saying be disproven, and they still go back to to their same talking points just because they don't want to believe it. You know, if people want to believe something bad enough. They will believe it. And these people want to believe that the election was stolen from them. So that's what it is. But what I do have hope for, I always think it's good to reach out to um, the children. That's where you have to start making the change. Um, start, start to have these, these, these debates a little bit differently. Start to be honest about what's going on. And have a true history because what I don't want to happen is that we just think this is just Trump and like I said Trump is like the worst and he's the one that a night is but you know we had stuff like this going on for a while you had Lee Atwater using the southern strategy um, purposely using racial dog whistles you know um, that to these to these same type of people so you had Ronald Reagan, who announced his campaign in Philadelphia, Mississippi, where the three civil rights workers were murdered. I mean, this has been going on for a while. So what I don't want to happen is that, okay, we just like, this is Trump. Once he's out of office, things will go back to normal where everything is fine. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. You know, um... Until we address these problems head on, and stop, and, just, and and stop pretending like okay, it's just a few bad apples. It's not ever going to change, you know. And again, it's a difference between having a policy difference. Let's just say, all right, you want to have a debate about, let's just say Medicare for all, right? Because that's that's um a big debate. Let's just say you want to argue the virtues of Medicare for all, whether it's feasible or not, whether it's the best policy, whether a free market health care system is better. That's a legitimate debate. Yes, that's a legitimate debate to have. We can talk. We can um, exchange points. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, if you want to have a debate about whether austerity or whether Keynesian economics is better you know uh, what should we do should we cut the deficit should we uh, increase government spending on social programs to stimulate the economy the economy that's a legitimate debate yes we can have that debate all day but a lot of these debates is on the fringes and it's nothing to talk about why <laughs> And I'm going to talk to you 
after all the evidence suggests otherwise that the selection was stolen. You know, um, why I'm going to have that argument with you. How I'm going to have an argument with somebody that believed a 13-year-old boy that had a toy weapon deserved to get killed. How I'm going to have a legit discussion that George, George Zimmerman should have got off for murdering Trayvon Martin when he initiated the conflict and was following him. And then you say that he was protecting himself when why didn't Trayvon Martin have a right to protect himself when he was being stalked by a dog when he was just a teenager? You know, um, stuff like that, I don't really have the patience for because it's obvious. And no matter what I say, if it's a racial component to it, you're not going to hear me out anyway. You know, so that's the way I feel about it. All right, but let's, you know, let's just keep building building um just remember you we do just do the best you can um just because things is one way now doesn't mean it will always be this way you know things can get worse but things can also get better you know so i just want to leave y'all with that thanks